So when I'm spending that kind of money for my baby monitor, I just expect it to work. You know, do I, I don't ask for much. Hey, what's up? It's Karen San Diego, and today's video is going to be all about the Outlet Smart Sock and Camera. If you aren't familiar with these products, the um, Outlet Camera is a traditional baby monitor, except that it works with your phone and you are able to monitor your child via your phone. The Smart Sock is more of like a heart, it's a heart rate um, and oxygen monitor, similar to the one that your baby had on in the hospital, except you can use this at home pretty much until your baby is walking in order to monitor their heart rate and their oxygen at home. Um, in case you are someone that is in need of a little bit more peace of mind, that is the perfect of purpose of those products. However, if you watched my last video, which was my bedside nursery tour, you know that I have quite a few opinions on these products. Spoiler alert, they're not positive. I really genuinely do not like these products and, um, I do not want this video to end up being like a roasting type of video. So because of that, I'm going to give you the positives first. So it just doesn't come off as like negative, negative, negative Nancy. Um, without taking too long, giving you any backstories, I'm just going to go right in with the positives. So first positive to the outlets, um, camera, I'll start with the camera, is that you kiss compatible with your phone. The reason that that is a positive is that if let's say, the baby is home with somebody else, whether it's the, um, the other caregiver or if it's like a babysitter or a relative or something, you have the ability to check in on your baby from your phone. So traditional baby monitors do have like a screen that comes with the monitor. With those screens, however, if you're not home, if you don't have it, if the screen is not um, on the same Wi-Fi or however it's working, you can't check it on the go. With the outlet camera, you do have the ability to check it on the go, which I have used quite a few times. If I was like stepping out to go somewhere and I wanted to make sure that my daughter was still sleeping, I am able to go in and look at that. So that is definitely beneficial. Um, as far as the smart sock, I think the, out of the two, the smart sock definitely has the most benefits. I still have my opinions. But it definitely has the most benefits because the smart sock gave me a huge amount of peace of mind when it wasn't freaking me out. It gave me a huge amount of peace of mind on whether or not Ryan was okay. So she wore it from literally the day she came home from the hospital up until she was about six months old. Six months? Maybe six or seven months old. We used it for quite a while. Um, the reason we stopped using it was as she started to get more active, um, the sock just, she would kick it off if she started crawling, um, and it was just harder to maintain. There's also another reason why I stopped using this, but we'll go to that in the negative. I'm trying to stay positive for this first part. So the positive is that it did give me a lot of peace of mind. I felt like I could sleep better. I got better sleep when she was wearing it. There was a few nights where it wasn't charged and I wasn't able to monitor her oxygen and her heart rate. And I was more nervous on those nights. So the nights when she was wearing it, I got a lot of peace of mind. Um, and for new parents, you know, peace of mind is a big deal, especially if you've never done this before. Um, for me, Every little weird noise Ryan made, I always thought something was wrong. So this thing just helped me know that she's okay. I don't have to be too worried. So for that reason, I think that that is a positive of having this product. And unfortunately, that about sums up the positives, um, my positive impressions about this product. Yeah. So the first negative is um, basically more of like a user error thing. So this could not end up being a negative if you are someone who really does a great job at reading directions. I don't always read the directions. Sometimes I just like to dive right in when I'm using products. But the first negative that I can think of is that um, the sock comes with a lot of different sizes. However, my baby was premature. So because of that, she was smaller than the average newborn. Um, so when she first started wearing the sock, um, I was assuming that it was on the smallest size so that it would be fine for her. However, even on the smallest size, it was still too small for her foot. Because of that, it caused a lot of false alarms. So um, if you're familiar with this product, or even if you're not, I don't have the, um, the smart sock anymore. I've sold it. But um, 
it comes with a base station that um, flashes red if there's a problem with like an alarming alarm if it goes red. And then it also comes with, um, it also goes green if every, if everything's fine, it just stays green the whole time. When it goes red, it is alarming. It literally will jolt you like up out of sleep. Like you will be scared. You will be, I, you know how many times I jumped out of bed crying because the alarm started going off only to find out that it was just, um, the sock was just r the wrong size. So it just wasn't, it wasn't reading properly. Um, which is a huge problem because as a new parent, this, this is what I'm talking about when she was teeny tiny. So like when she was like a few weeks old and I'm still like, how am I going to do this? How am I supposed to look after this human and keep the human safe? And I have this thing to give me peace of mind and it just keeps going red. Like it just kept giving me false alarms. And it was always like in the middle of the night at like one o'clock in the morning when I'm sound asleep thinking everything is fine. And this ah, ah, alarm starts going off. And I'm worried that something's wrong with my child. I check on her. She's breathing. She's fine. It was the fact that the sock was poorly fitted. That's what happened there. Um, so false alarms, not fun. A positive thing to that negative, I guess, would be that once she gained weight and was about the normal size of a, of a newborn and the sock did fit properly and then the false alarms never happened again. Um, so... If your baby is not premature, then you probably won't have as many of these problems as I did, unless you're using the wrong sock. So um, like I said, it comes with, I think like three different socks. You have to make sure that the sock you're using is the right size for your baby or else you will get these false alarms. And I'm telling you, it will shake you. Like it is, it is not fun. I don't wish that on anybody. It makes you feel like something is wrong and also another con. Another con, and this one was more so um, with the sock, but it's not the sock's problem. It's literally Owlet's network's problem. Um, every now and then they would have a glitch to where the sock just would not be able to tell me her um, her vitals. Like it just wouldn't say it. And then they would send you like a little message. Um, I'm gonna see if I have a screenshot in my phone and I'll put that like here. I'll put it here. If I have a screenshot to show you what that looked like. But every now and then they would have like a network outage and then just not be able to tell you the baby's vitals. Like the app would just completely shut down and you wouldn't be able to see anything in the app. And sometimes these outages would last for up to like two days where like I have a baby monitor and a smart sock, but I can't see any of the information because I don't know, the outlets network went down and they're just not telling me things. So now I have this useless product and... I don't get anything for it so so that was a negative about the sock now the camera um one of my main problems that i have with this camera is um first thing it glitches constantly so there has been so many incidents where ryan is in her room and i want to make sure she's okay and i go to the app and literally it won't load like um it'll just have like a little spinning circle showing me that it's trying to load but then it just won't load and then I can't tell if she's okay so then I gotta come into the room and it's not as if I come into the room she'll wake up and then what's the point if I can't see the baby so I'm gonna try right now live on camera to go into the app um hopefully it does work but we'll see so when you open up the phone see how it's like spinning like it's literally doing it right oh and now it comes on. But you see like the, how there was a lag time. Sometimes it literally will not even stop spinning. Like it, I won't be able to see her. Um, that time it did. It was able to come on after a little bit of spinning. But in the event that I'm trying to see like if she's okay immediately, that little bit of lag does matter. Um, next thing I want to show you um, is how much of a lag time there is with the actual um, video. So once it is up and running, I think that is in focus, right? So you can see my screen, my, um, the camera right here. I'll put it on wide view. So this is the camera, the crib is right here. Um, so I wanna show you guys real time what I mean by that lag time. So I'm gonna just stand up and show you the camera. So this is the camera right here. I have this tripod in my hand. I'm gonna put the tripod on um, in front of the crib um, to show you exactly how long it takes for you to actually see the tripod. Um, so now it's, it's there and you see how it took like a few seconds before you were able to see it gone. Now I'm going to bring the tripod back to the camera so you can see. 
You see that? That's like a good, at least like a few seconds of lag time. I'm actually going to see exactly how long it was. So hold on. So here's the camera. I'm going to put it there. One, two, three, four. So four seconds. So it was about four seconds of lag time between when I put this um, by the crib and when the camera showed me that it was in front of the crib. And while you may think like four seconds, it's not that serious. Four seconds is not a long time with a baby. Four seconds is a long time. Four seconds is the difference between them climbing out of their crib and falling on their head. Um, that can happen literally in a second. So like, I want to be able to see in real time what she's doing. So if I need to go and get her, I want to know right now what she's doing. I don't want to lag. And that lag is just, to me, it's a little too long um, between what's actually happening when it, when I see it. Like, that just, that just doesn't work for me. Like it needs to be immediate. And I know with some of the more traditional maybe monitors that come with the actual screen versus these that are working off your Wi-Fi, um, they tend to be quicker in reaction time and won't have that long of a lag. So um, maybe possibly that could be a better bet. Another downside that I saw with the smart sock, and I have to look and see if I have any pictures from this because this is when she was younger because she hasn't used the sock in like six months or so. But when she was younger, what I noticed is as she started to wear the sock more and more, so by like month three or four, she started to develop a rash on her foot where the sensor was for the sock. And the rash at one point had gotten like pretty bad. Um, Luckily, it did start to clear up um, once I, st once I stopped, stopped using it, it completely cleared up. But at one point, it was a pretty bad rash. Um, if I do not have any pictures in my phone of what that looked like, I will insert um, here. I will insert pictures from something similar. Like I'll Google it and see if I can find anything that is close to what Ryan's foot looked like at this time. I'll put it right here. But she developed a rash from wearing this thing every day. And... Um, the way around that would be to not have them have her wear it every day. But then what would be the point of having it if you're not using it every day? Um, so it definitely did cause that. Another downside that I have with these socks is they wear like so easily and so horrible that you're going to, if you are using it every day, you're going to have to buy replacement socks, um, which obviously like you could, but for the amount of money I paid for it, like I want the fabric to be durable at the time when it started to wear like this, my child wasn't even mobile. Like she wasn't crawling or anything like that. So I don't feel like it should have been like getting damaged as badly as it did. Um, it's just like by where the sensor goes, it would start to get like really frayed and start ripping to the point where the sensor could literally like come out if like it wanted to. Um, but yeah, it, it got pretty damaged pretty easily. So I think, I know that they have a newer version now. So what I'm talking about is in reference to, the model that I'm talking about is the Outlet Smart Sock 2. I know that they do have a new model out, the Smart Sock 3. So hopefully a lot of these problems were fixed with the new model. Um, I don't have the new model, so I can't really tell you anything about um, what has been fixed in that model because I have I had the smart sock too. the camera I believe though is still the same so Yeah, I would definitely say if you are in the market for a baby monitor Definitely go with a different camera the smart sock I would more so tell you to get that because like again It did give me a, a whole lot of peace of mind in the beginning Especially when I was a nervous wreck it did give me peace of mind the cons um to it which was the rash and um and the false alarms the false alarm was because the baby was a premature uh, baby so one, if your baby also is once your baby gets to normal weight that won't be a problem um the rash i'm not sure how they could go about fixing that um a good way to fix that is maybe to try to make your baby wear it less so like only while sleeping ryan pretty much had hers on um all the time unless it was charging so that also could have been a reason for the rash but i also had it on all the time because I was nervous all the time. So like another con that I have, and this one may not be like something you'd be like, Karen, come on. Like, that's not that serious, but I'm going to still tell y'all because you guys need to know. Well, um, the camera does go on the wall. Um, it comes with like a mounting strip with like some little stickies that you put on the back to put it on the wall. However, those little stickers are supposed to be like command strips, but they completely ripped the paint off my wall. Like I have, I would show you, but I put a mirror 
where it was to block it so that nobody has to see that. But um, the little stickers, as I took each one off the wall to take the camera down, it like completely stripped the paint off my wall, my walls. And this is an apartment, so like hopefully they don't take my security deposit for that. But um, I believe in the instructions, it did say that it wouldn't do that. It was supposed to not damage your wall. But just know that if you're putting that thing on your wall, it's going to strip your paints off the wall. That's what it did to mine. So just be aware of that. Obviously, this is not like a major concern because it's not related to the baby. But I care about my apartment walls. And like I said, I care about aesthetics. So I don't want anything ripping the paint off my walls. It is supposed to keep my walls safe. <laughs> the outlet Smart Talk 2 retails for, I have it right here, retails for $249.99. The newer version 3 retails for $299.99. And then the camera retails for $149.99. So these things are not cheap. So when you buy things that are of higher price, um, you definitely want it to be efficient in this, in my opinion, especially the camera, especially the camera. This just was not um, efficient to the level that I expected. Um, $149.99. To me, anyway, um, I'm not counting your pockets, but to me, $149.99 is a lot of money for a baby monitor. So when I'm spending that kind of money for my baby monitor, I just expect it to work. You know, do I, I don't ask for much. Like the amount of times that that happened is just ridiculous and like completely unacceptable. Like outlet, uh, what's, what's up? I'm actually currently trying to figure out like what, camera to get instead but i'm still not 100 percent sure if you have a good recommendation what am i doing with this so if you have a recommendation for a better camera that doesn't have as much lag time and is more reliable please go ahead and let me know um this time around i'm not really trying to get like what's fancy like i want to get what works i think that is like a pro parenting tip that like i needed to understand before because i when i was shopping for what to get for Ryan before she was born. I was more so like, I want the nicest thing. I want the most fanciest thing, um, the most stylish things. And a lot of the times those things are cute, but they're not always the most functional. So I had to learn that like functionality over aesthetics, like that's hard for me because I care about aesthetics, but functionality as parents, functionality is number one. And this is just not functional. So yeah, that pretty much sums up this video. Um, I hope it didn't come across too much like I was bashing them because I really wasn't. Um, I really did want to like these products. I desperately wanted to like these products. However, they just it just was not functional for me. Um, if you bought this product and you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments how you felt about it. I'm really curious to know. Um, but for me, this one gets out of 10 stars, I will give this a, a three out of 10. Like they are better monitors. Don't buy this. Don't deal with the headache. If you want to get the sock, maybe get the sock, but you genuinely... So my camera just completely died on me while I was trying to film that, um, the last part of the video. But basically I'm saying, like, you really do not need either of these products. They're just not functional. Um, the, camp, the, the sock genuinely did give me a lot of peace of mind when she was younger. However, it wasn't something that I would say that I needed. So if, um, I was to have another child, I probably would not buy the sock again. Um, how, just because... One, the rash situation and just the fact that the app was just so wonky that a lot of the time I did not even get to get use out of it. So just save your money. $300 is a lot of money for something that is not always functional and um, sometimes inaccurate. So I would just say um, if you want it, just do buy it at your own risk. Just be aware that there may be some sort of glitches um, down the line. So don't rely on it as your only way of checking on your baby. Like at all like if you take nothing else away if you decide to buy this sock make sure that you are not using this as your only way of making sure your baby is okay because sometimes it is just extremely unreliable um which can be dangerous if you are relying on it for the only way that you're checking on your kid other than that i'm gonna go ahead and end this video here let me know if you bought this and have similar opinions or if you bought this and love it um, i'm curious to know what you have to say and i will see you in my next video where in the world is Karen San Diego? From BK to Belly, it's anywhere she say so. She changing your life, can see it straight through her eyes. Assistant moms every time she locked in. Extra, extra, read all about it.